Hey everybody, I hope all is well. Hope everyone's safe and healthy and, and everyone is uh, you know blessed. I just thank God for today. We have the breath of life in our lungs and you know we're in our right minds and God is so awesome. And I, you know, no matter what, we're not gonna let the enemy get us down. I'm excited today. You know, we got election coming up tomorrow and you know, whatever happens, you know, it's just awesome. It's an awesome feeling to have security knowing that my God raises up kings and takes kings down. It's him who blesses nations. It's him who raises up the prophets. It's him who puts his Holy Spirit inside of us. It's nothing that we've done. It's nothing that we can do to earn God's favor and God's grace. He loves everyone. He wants everyone to be saved. He wants everyone to know him and be in relationship with him. He's a God of love. He is a God of mighty and awesome power and glory and splendor. And I want you to know that you can know him today. I want you to know that God's favor. God's love is just waiting for you and I each and every morning. You know, the Bible says that he renews every morning. He renews his blessings every morning. He doesn't give us yesterday's bread. He doesn't give us yesterday's blessings. There's a fresh blessing for you and I each and every morning when we wake up. It's a new day and we can thank God for that. And so uh, I want to read something to you that I wrote down, just some things about 2020, a reflection of 2020, um, just some quick notes. And I just want to read them to you. But I want to start with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, I thank you, Father God, for this day. I thank you for all that you're doing. I thank you for the United States of America. I thank you for our freedom. I thank you, Father God, for the blessed hope that we have, that one day we will be with you for eternity. And all of the things that are in this life will matter no more. Lord God, so I just pray that you help me to talk about you today. Fill me, Holy Spirit, with your presence and let those who are listening be touched and transformed by your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. So I believe that God's giving us one last push in America. I believe that we are living in the last of the last days you know, and uh, God is calling out to all of us. He's, he's reaching out to all of us. You know, we have a, a huge crisis. We've had a huge, two huge crises this year in our country with the pandemic and then the, the, um, the political unrest that's happening all around our country from West Coast to East Coast, North to South. You know, many of us, if not all of us, have been somehow affected by these things. And so, um, you know, but in the midst of all of this, I want you to know that God is good. Amen. God is good. I don't care what the situations look like. God is on the throne of heaven. The earth is his footstool. My God reigns. And I want you to know today that God has everything. He knows the end from the beginning. Nothing catches God off guard. Many people can sit here and try to question God and say, oh, well, why is there suffering in the world? And why is this? And why is that? Let me tell you something. God's glory, God's love, God's compassion, his patience has demonstrated towards us that while we were yet sinners, while we were all in rebellion. Our free will has led us to rebel against God. And that's why we have all of these things happening in our world. The suffering, the pandemics, the, the injustices, all of that is on us. Let's not blame God for our rebellion. It's us. If we just live according to God's plan and God's will, we'd be in heaven. Amen. We'd be in paradise. But we're here in this life. We're here on this earth where you and I are sharing this planet with people who don't love themselves. They don't love their, their neighbors and they sure don't love God. And that is why there's so much suffering in our world today. But I want you to know something, that God is moving. We're in the last of the last days. He's poured out his spirit upon all flesh. Since the day of Pentecost, since the day that the apostles were in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came upon those disciples, or those apostles, all the way up until today, God has poured out his spirit on all flesh. So everybody has had a tug in their heart. Everybody, no one has an excuse about not knowing God. Everybody, well, even in the book of Romans, Paul writes that even through nature, God has revealed himself to those people who don't know him. So we all have had an opportunity to know God. And so right now, God is calling you and I into intimacy with him. And I'm looking up Kron Apostle. I'm looking across our nation. I'm looking at all the things that are happening. And I'm saying, wow, Lord, you know, there's so much happening, but yet I see your goodness. I see you moving. And I want to just read some things, some notes of 2020 that God has put upon my heart. Some, some articles that I, that I just pulled up. You know, you can go on, on the internet. You can go on Google and find these things. Um, but um, God's push for the United States of America in these last days. In January of this year, 2020, the first case of COVID-19 was confirmed in the United States. Two months later, March 11th, 
the World Health Organization officially declared coronavirus a global pandemic. America went into shutdown and fear was in ample supply. We watched the news in horror as the virus ripped through countries like Italy, Spain, Germany, and South Korea. Night after night, day after day, we were inundated with press conferences from governors, the president, health officials, and pundits, all of them giving us unreliable information and causing further confusion, fear, and uncertainty. All of this happening at the tail end of a fraudulent and illegitimate impeachment attempt of our president by Congress. 2020 was off to a unique and un an interesting start. As we needed anything, as if we needed anything else to test our resolve as a nation, an explosive cocktail of fear, frustration, idle hands, boredom, political unrest, inability to properly bury or grieve the death of our loved ones, travel restrictions, and just old-fashioned cabin fever was brewing in the confines of a two-month quarantine. Enter in the murder of George Floyd. Regardless of where anyone stands on this terrible incident, it was tragic and a senseless loss of human life. This would be the spark that lit the powder keg, sending America and Americans flying out of the cannon into the streets and onto social media platforms. Now, what was in our hearts would be revealed for all to see. It was good, it was bad, it was ugly, but it was real. And it was true transparency. From the very beginning of the pandemic, the message from the Lord to the church was clear. Many pastors and preachers and prophets and parishioners heard the message and the church in America responded. Second Chronicles 7, 14 and 15 says, If my people, he's not talking about the non-believers, he's not talking about the sinners, he's not talking about those who are lost, he's talking about the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, his people, his cho chosen nation, his people that, have, that are called by his name. He says, if, though, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then, you see there's if, then, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal, the, heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. After the George Floyd murder, it was evident how divided we truly were. Race, political affiliation, stance on social issues, and the pandemic were all lines drawn in the sand, dividing friends, co-workers, families, and even churches. But God was on the move to turn what the devil meant for evil into good. Churchleaders.com article dated June 29th, 2020. The street corner of Chicago and 38th and Minneapolis, where George Floyd died just a few weeks ago, has gone from a place of tragedy and unrest to a place of revival. As the atmosphere of the area shifted, it's also gotten a new name. Chicago Ave has been renamed George Floyd Ave. Dr. Charles Karuku and his wife and his wife Lindsay are leading believers from different churches and locations as they minister to the people showing up to pay their respects to the late Floyd. The Karuk the Karukuses an interracial couple living in Minneapolis hope that what started as a tragedy would transform into a global revival. Charles is the senior pastor of International Outreach Church in Burnsville, Minnesota. He and Lindsay have been setting up an outdoor service each evening this week as people travel to the George Floyd Memorial, calling their effort Unite Unity Revival Minneapolis. The Karukas have set up a Facebook page that now has over 1,800 followers. Speaking to CBN, Charles said God had been preparing the couple to lead the movement even before Floyd's death. I was on a 40-day fast that ended the day George Floyd was killed, Dr. Charles told CBN. When we started the fast, the Lord told us that on that day of Pentecost, we would do a big thing. We did not know what it would be. So we kept praying and fasting. The day we ended the fast, the riots broke out. 
Instead of running from the riots, the couple decided to go to the place where Floyd was killed and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. The movement they started is focused on personal evangelism. They send people in pairs to evangelize to those gathered at the memorial site. Every day, there have been hundreds of people coming to Christ. I'll say it again. Every day, there have been hundreds of people coming to Christ. The couple said in a Facebook video, they say it's been exciting to see the body of Christ be active. Being the organizers, the Karukus see their role as providing an opportunity for people who want to do something to address the wound the incident has reopened in the United States. They are seeing people coming from all over the country, even other parts of the world, to do what they can help. Charles says, Jesus Christ brings us together and through Jesus Christ we can be united one to another because reconciliation starts first with God and then with one another. Hallelujah. Lindsay says, trying to address racial reconciliations. Let me say that again. Lindsay says, trying to address racial reconciliation without Jesus is often fruitless. Amen. It's easy to pick up, pick out the problems, but we, the body of Christ, for this particular problem, we have the solution. And the solution is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so until we bring him on the scene and we involve him in these things, it doesn't matter what we're doing or who we're talking to. Nothing's ever going to change. End quote. God's wonder working power was at work and the foothold Satan thought he had was immediately confronted by the church of Jesus Christ and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Hallelujah. An article, an article in Pontotic Progress on September 16th says this, Jonathan Kahn, senior pastor and messianic rabbi of the Jerusalem Center, Beth Israel in Wayne, New Jersey, and president of the Hope of the World Ministries, began issuing a call for repentance on January 14th, 2019. Since then, he, along with Reverend Kevin Jesse, president of Global Strategic Alliance, have organized one of the largest prayer gatherings ever attempted. The return is a movement, an appointed time, and a specific day set apart for one purpose. The return to God by coming before his presence in humility, in sincerity, in prayer, and repentance. The main ten days of prayer, fasting, and repentance start with the biblical Feast of, of Trumpets this Friday, September 18th, and end with the Day of Atonement, September 28th. The central day of the return will be Saturday, September 26, 2020, on the National Mall in Washington, here in the United States, and throughout the nation and the world. What was interesting about that is on the same day, on September 26, in the same place, National Mall in Washington, the Lord had touched another international servant of his to organize a day of prayer and repentance. Franklin Graham, son of the late Billy Graham, scheduled an event called Prayer March 2020. This was to be a weekend of national repentance of the church to the Lord. As these two events were being planned, cities were burning with protests, and the COVID-19 manufactured pandemic continued to confuse many as to why churches could not open, but riots were okay. Then in August, the sound of worship developed and started to get louder and louder in America. Everywhere the riots were, there was a counter-movement. A movement of worship and word and spiritual and physical healings followed. As the riots focused on the injustices of our nation, the movement focused on the grace of God. As the riots screamed for retribution, the movement shouted God's forgiveness. The riots demanded violence. The movement proposed peace. The riots operated in anger. The movement walked in his love, the love of Jesus Christ. Let us worship movement came just in time to be a balm of Gilead in a place and time where division and hurt were festering. The infection of sin had caused the relational wounds to become toxic and septic between friends and family, races, political affiliates, and many different demographics. 
God knows the best antidote for this is to take our eyes off of ourselves and put them on him. And nothing does that better than worship. With over 40 stops in three months, my, my brothers and sisters, please listen. 40 stops with over 40 stops in three months. The Let Us Worship movement led by Sean Fuchs accompanied by nationally recognized pastors like Jensen Franklin and Franklin Graham, has brought a clear message of revival through repentance, salvations, and baptism in some of the areas most impacted by civil unrest and rioting. Places like Minneapolis, Minnesota, where all of this started, Seattle, Washington, Colorado Springs, Colorado, Kenosha, Wisconsin, and Portland, Oregon. These were some of the cities that were on the news for being epicenters of rioting and violence. Yet God sent healing through worship and word to change the atmosphere. Hallelujah. National Religious Broadcasters article published on October 1st, 2020. In addition to the tens of thousands who descended upon Washington for prayer March 2020 on September 26th, more than 3.8 million people from 57 countries reportedly participated in the event by watching it live on Facebook, YouTube, and the Prayer March website. On September 28, 2020, the Daily Signal said this in their article, a prayer and repentance event called The Return took place on the National Mall on Friday night and all day Saturday in tandem with the Prayer March 2020. Both events drew participants from all around the country who said they felt compelled to intercede on behalf of America at this moment in history. Christian Post article, Church and Ministries, Monday, October 26, 2020, says this, Tens of thousands of Christians from all over the country assembled on Sunday evening to worship on the National Mall, to intercede for the nation amid an ongoing pandemic and tense, tense election season. As part of the worship artist Sean Fuchs multi-city national tour called Let Us Worship, the Sunday event was the 45th place the California-based musician had led worship often in places where violence and discord have manifested earlier this year, such as Seattle, Minneapolis, and Portland, Oregon. A cold drizzle periodically rained down on the crowd with temperatures in the 40s. We are now on the brink of arguably one of the most controversial elections in history, my brothers and sisters. Conservative Judge Amy Connett Barrett, was recently sworn in to be only the fifth woman added to the Supreme Court. And if the Lord wills, we could have four more years of God's favor in the land. The deceptive work of political hate groups, corrupt politicians, wealthy and influential people and groups, and even false Christians who they themselves are deceived, will continue to wage war against truth and righteousness. As the remnant of God's holy people, we must continue to be steadfast in prayer, committing to fasting, be ready to preach the word in season and out of season, speak truth no matter what the consequences are, endure suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Moving forward into the next season of our nation, let us follow the word from Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians. Chapter 5 and 15 says this, So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these days that are evil. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. You, my brothers and sisters, me. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life, but instead be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing songs and hymns, and spiritual songs among yourselves, and thanks for everything, and making music to the Lord in your hearts, and give thanks for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, please listen. There's no going back. There's only going forward. All these places, God has sent the balm of Gilead, a healing aroma, a healing perfume, medicinal for the souls and the minds and the hearts of humanity. God is reaching out to those that are hurting. 
Let us be part of the solution and part of the healing and not part of the problem. Let us not walk as the people of this world are walking in division, picking sides, Republican, Democrat, black, white, law enforcement, injustice, all of these things. But let us stand for righteousness in Christ Jesus. Let us not put our own desires ahead of God's plan for our lives. Let us lay down our will for the will of the Father. God, my, my brothers and sisters, please listen. Don't get drawn away by the, by, by the lies of this world and our culture. In America right now, there is a spirit of witchcraft that is operating under the guise of, 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 of humanitarian efforts and, and, and injustice, uh, social justice and all of these things. And even church, you know, the, 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 the spirit of witchcraft is operating under the lies and the guise of love. He is deceiving many of us. Wake up, my brothers and sisters. Wake up from your sleep. Rise up and allow the Lord to fill you with his Holy Spirit so we can be empowered to be the light of this world that he has called us to be. If salt loses its saltiness, what good is it but to be thrown down and trampled underfoot by men? My brothers and sisters, do not be contaminated by the things of this life, of our society, of this culture. But let us stand out for Christ's sake, for the kingdom of heaven. Let us stand up and stand out and speak love and truth to those who are perishing and to one another as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. The time is short. The day is, the day is already spent. Night is coming when no man can do work. It is now. The time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Let us stand up as God is sending these gentlemen, these women, these people to go into some of the hardest hit communities by social injustice, by division and hatred and murder. And they are bringing healing by singing and by evangelizing and declaring the goodness of Jesus Christ. Let us be about our father's business in these last days. Let us set aside every weight that brings us down and hinders us from fulfilling the calling and the purpose in your life and in my life. Stop waiting for the pastors to do the job. Stop waiting for the people with the, with the big ministries to go and do it. You can do something right in your home, right in your place of work, in your school, in your community, in your neighborhood. Let us step up and step out and declare the righteousness and goodness and love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Right now there is a hunger. There is a need for healing. Let us be part of the solution. Part of what God wants is to evangelize that the gospel of Jesus Christ will be preached throughout the whole world. Let us do our part. Let us do our part. Let us not be hindered by fear. We shall suffer. The Bible says we will suffer. Anyone who wants to follow Christ Jesus needs to pick up their cross, die to themselves, and operate under the power and guidance of His Holy Spirit to accomplish the great things in this world that He has called us to do. He said, greater things you shall do in my name when I leave and go to the Father and the Comforter will come and instruct us in all truth and in all ways. Hallelujah. Glory be to our living Jesus Christ, the God of the universe, for all things will be put under his feet. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, now is not the time to get caught up in the, th the affairs of this life, but let us stay focused. We are on a rescue mission. Oh, hallelujah. Listen, we are living in a time where like Noah was when the rain was coming down and no one knew what was happening until they got into the ark and the door was closed and it was too late. Let us go and call as many as possible into the ark called Jesus Christ. He is the ark. He is the savior. He is the redeemer. He is our friend. He is the son of the living God and he wants all to know him. Let us be about our Father's business and introducing the world to Jesus Christ. 
We are not responsible. We don't have the power. We don't have the means to save men. But we do have the ability and the authority and the commandment to go forth and tell everyone the highways and the byways, the rich and the poor and the poor, the black and the white, no matter where they stand in their demographic position, in their socioeconomic status, in their political affiliations. It doesn't matter what their religions are, but to give them Jesus. Hallelujah. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. The world is hurting. Our, our nation is hurting. And what is about to happen, no matter who wins this election, there will be those who will be angry and hurt. They have their hopes and their confidence in one in a, in a man. But we, but not us. For we have our trust and confidence in the God of the, of the heavens and the earth, the God of the universe, the creator of all things, the, the, the one who knows the end from the beginning. He already knows who's going to be elected. It's in his will. It's in his plans. Let us be about his business and declare his goodness to all of those who will be hurting after this next election coming up tomorrow. Let us pray that God's will be done for our nation. Hallelujah. It's all about Jesus. We cannot physically force people to change their ways, to change their hearts, to change their way of thinking, their acting, their behaviors. It's not our job. Our job is to give them Jesus. Hallelujah. For one man sows the seed and another man waters, but it is Christ who gives the increase. Hallelujah. I want to pray right now. If you don't mind, pray with me for our nation. Pray that the body of Christ will rise up and be the bride that he has called us to be. Hallelujah. A bride that is without spot and blemish or wrinkle. A bride who has kept our cloth and our clothing pure and clean. That we have not been soiled and dirtied and contaminated by the things of this world. But let us stay focused and remain vigilant and aware and loyal to the one who has enlisted us. Hallelujah, Christ Jesus. Oh, glory. Father, in the name above every name, great Jehovah, in the name of your son, Yeshua. Oh, God, I come before your throne with my brothers and sisters, oh, God. Father, I thank you for bringing the balm of Gilead to Portland and Washington and, 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 and Seattle and all of these places in Colorado. Oh God, where there was hurting, where the devil had ravaged through there, but you brought in the body of Christ. You brought in the infantry to go in and bring healing and bring restoration. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, we pray right now for this election tomorrow. Let your will be done and let there be peace, oh God. Let there be love, Lord God. Let there be understanding, Lord God. Let the church of Jesus Christ promote healing and restoration found only in Christ Jesus. Spirit of God, fill us with your presence. Enable us, empower us to do all that you've called us to do. For you have sent us out as sheep among the wolves, O oh God. Give us the discernment, O oh God. Give us the supernatural insight, O oh God. Open our eyes that we see beyond the physical, O oh God. Inspire your people, Spirit of God. Motivate us, Holy Spirit. Convict our hearts of sin, O oh God. Convict us for not living the way you've called us to live. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, for being lazy and not accomplishing your purpose in the earth. O oh, Spirit of God, we ask that your fire, the anointing of your presence, will burn in our hearts for you, O oh God, in these last of the last days. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to your precious name. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, we come against all corruption, all political corruption that is inspired by the Antichrist spirit of God. Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we raise up a banner against all spiritual wickedness that will try to defraud, that will try to deceive, that will try to steal the election. Oh, God, reveal those things that are hidden that will try to, to do what the darkness wants to happen and let your will be done tomorrow, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We commit ourselves unto you. We commit this nation unto you. Let there be healing in the land. Hallelujah. Glory be to your holy name. 
Father, we thank you and we honor you and we bless you and we give you the glory and the honor and the praise for you are worthy. In your precious name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Son of the living God, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God is for you. He is not against you. If you are on the side of Jesus Christ, then you are on the right side. There is only one side to choose. It is the side of Jesus Christ. Church of Jesus Christ, body of Christ, I ask you, please, do not allow your garments to be soiled with the hatred and bigotry and division going on in this current season in our nation, whether it be divisive about the pandemic or about racial matters or political affiliations. Oh, but cast it all off of you that you might run your race unhindered and unencumbered, that you might finish well in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let us continue in prayer throughout this election and even going into the next season for our nation. We need God. We need him. We can't do it without him. Keep yourself focused in Christ Jesus and to him be all of the glory in Jesus name. God bless you guys. I love you. Stay well, stay safe, be blessed, and we'll talk soon. Amen.